Hello, my name is Rahul. I'm currently doing my fellowship in pediatric critical care medicine. And over the past five years, I've been absolutely passionate about helping students just like you kick ass on the USMLE exam. In this video, we will be going through how I review an NBME assessment. Stay tuned. All right, so this is gonna be part two of my video series entitled How to Analyze and Review an NBME. If you missed the first video, I will link it in the description. But essentially, the first video covered how to analyze the NBME. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to review an NBME. So I want to really highlight three important points. And that is when you finish taking an NBME assessment, have a time-based cap, be specific, and categorize mistakes. And we're gonna go into this in a little bit more detail. When we're thinking about having a time-based cap, I want you to really focus on setting about four to five hours after your NBME assessment to review the exam. No more, no less. I would say four to five hours is that good sweet spot time. And I used to work in the Pomodoro methodology or in a 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off, but I would try to finish my NBME assessment review that same day and towards the end of the evening, go back to my normal content studying, especially if I was in dedicated study. Why I think this is really important is because if you review the NBME on the same day you took it, the material is very fresh. And so you will be able to figure out where you had an incorrect neuronal synapse and kind of channel it into a more correct neuronal synapse. The second point is be specific. And what I mean by that is to not necessarily be like, oh, this question was about cardiac physiology. Oh no, this question was about cardiac physiology, but in particular, they were trying to test me on the changes in heart rate with the bare receptor reflex. The more that you can look at these questions and say, this is what they were testing me on, or this is what they wanted me to really keep in mind for this test question, you will be able to augment your knowledge and really gain a lot from the NBME. And then the third step is to categorize your mistakes. A lot of the time, I put my mistakes into two categories. Either I messed up with strategy, which includes, oh man, I just didn't know the content, or I misapplied the content, or psychology. And let's go into psychology just a little bit more. When we're thinking about, hey, I missed it due to psychology, Maybe it was because, oh, I just like literally was so tired at this section of the exam, or I was running out of time and so I was getting really stressed or anxious. When you categorize your mistakes into whether or not it's strategy or psychology, you will be able to improve on either end, hopefully, for your next NBME assessment. So in summary, make sure you spend four to five hours after you take your NBME assessment to really go through your specific content areas that you missed. And then finally, you want to categorize your mistakes into strategy or psychology. All right. The next part of this video, we are going to be talking about how I use Notion to review my NBME. I simply create an inline table in Notion with the following headings. Let's go through them. The first heading is going to be the question number, which is pretty self-explanatory. Then the second, I use a multi-select or a single select property type. And that then allows me to tag which NBME. And this is going to come into, uh, this is going to be very important when we are using the same system for multiple NBMEs. The third heading is again going to be a multi-select and I tag the organ system in which the question I got incorrect is going to be most related to. Like I said earlier, we want to isolate what is the specific content type that they are testing from your incorrect question. And I find this content type in two places. Number one, you can look at your first aid, which now they have a 2021 version, or you can look at the USMLE content outline. All you got to do is Google USMLE content outline, and that will give you a list of the content specs. The next heading is going to be a free text, and it is going to be a paraphrase of the vignette. 
And the way that I like to describe this is make it like a math equation. So we will go through an example, but you see plus, plus, plus equals the answer. And when you paraphrase the vignette, you start thinking like the test maker. And that's what where I'm really passionate about is actually trying to figure out what are the important test taking strategies behind the question. This one is actually a unique one, and that is constructing an if-then statement. When we think about if-then statements, I want you to understand something known as the carryover principle. Essentially, what we want to do when we're going through an incorrect NBME question is garner a general test-taking principle such that if you see that similar concept again in another UWorld or NBME question, it triggers your mind to go down that same thought process. For example, if I see tachycardia and hypotension, then think shock. That's not necessarily focused on what the minutia of the incorrect question was, but it just tells me that, okay, this question was about shock, tachycardia and hypotension. If I see that, I need to be thinking about shock. And so now in the subsequent questions, you will really hone in on those vital signs and be like, dang, I need to look for tachycardia and hypotension when I'm dealing with shock questions. So let's go through a sample question going through all of these headings. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Pretend I got this NBME question incorrect. So the question reads, the most likely cause of the patient's symptoms is infection in which of the following? 22-year-old man has a 36-hour history of pain and swelling of his left left testes. So you know that there is some sort of repro inflammation. This could be epididymitis, urethritis, etc. He had a mild dysuria and urethral discharge. Now this urethral discharge then kind of confirms, man, I'm thinking about urethritis and this could be an STI related. Gram stain of the material from the urethra show numerous neutrophils, but no organisms. So when I see numerous neutrophils, I know that that's bacterial and then no organisms, you really hone in on intracellular abnormalities. So what's the most likely cause of this infection? Well, the answer is going to be chlamydia. However, I put E. coli. And so this gives me an opportunity to review this question. So let's go through the actual headings. As you can see in the sample, this is question number one. We tagged it as NBME sample. You can tag it to NBME 23, wherever you find it. This is a organ system related to repro. You can put any of your organ systems. They are specifically testing me on epididymitis and urethritis. And then I paraphrase the vignette in a very focused and math equation way. 22-year-old, testicular pain, high neutrophil, no organism, chlamydia trachomatis. And so my if-then statement is really focused on, oh, how do I recognize intracellular organisms? So my if-then statement would be, if I see no organisms, then think of an intracellular pathology. Maybe your take home was if I see numerous neutrophils, then think bacterial. And then I add a quick note from first aid just to help me kind of hone in on the specific content type. So why do I think this methodology of reviewing an NBME is going to be so effective? It's because you can then review this table and filter the table based on organ systems or NBMEs. And you can use active recall to go through the various paraphrases of the vignettes, look at your if-then statements to help you on test taking, and then review specific content type all in one place. If you keep doing this for every single NBME, you will then be able to hit filter and you can add a filter that says, all right, I wanna review NBME 23 and I want my organ system to be respiratory only. And so now all your respiratory questions come up. Oh my God! Wow! And you can easily rip through them because I think one of the important resources that you can build is your own set of NBME notes such that prior to your ProMetric exam, you review all of your NBMEs. And so that's why I put all of my notes together where NBME contains, for example, UWorld self-assessment one, all of my UWorld self-assessment notes are going to be in one area. So the point of this video was to give you the tools and a specific way 
of how you can review an NBME such that you can extract the most amount of value and information in a systematic and structured way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification for future videos. And also stay tuned for my webinars, which are coming up. These webinars have been growing and I've been having an international audience, so I'm super pumped. We're going to be covering some top concepts across the organ systems in my signature active recall way. I really am passionate about test taking skills and applying the content that you're learning for the USMLE to exam questions. And if you're interested, I do have my test taking skills masterclass and rapid review course. It is a course that is focused on how to create a systematic methodology for your exam and test taking in particular. If you have any questions, reach out, but link is going to be in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.